good. You thought I was worth saving, so you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping, so you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrifice your life so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I can tell everyone I know. You thought I was worth saving. So you gave. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you clean me up inside. So you sacrifice, yeah. so you sacrifice your life so I can be free. I can be whole. I can, be I can tell everyone. I can tell everyone I know you thought I was worth saving. So you gave.
Oh, you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I could be free. Wonderful job at the choir. I want you to give them another round of applause. I want you to turn to your neighbor, to your left and to your right, and say, neighbor, neighbor. never say never. never, say never. Now turn to your neighbor to the other side and say, neighbor, neighbor. I say never say never yeah I'll tell you my reason why I wouldn't say never again where's the keyboard player play medicationally for me please just play medicationally any chord Pastor Wilbur celebrating some 30 years in pastoral ministry but 31 years ago I became a fan of the Los Angeles Lakers. 31 years ago, I was at Hawksville High School, some of my, my classmates, they laugh at me when I say I was a Laker for life. I see one such, Minister Chivago Lang is in the house. They laugh at me when I say I was a Laker for life, but I understand why they laugh now. And I say I would never change from being a Laker, hallelujah. That was 31 years ago. But on Thursday, yeah. 8.15 p.m., somewhere in the constituency. Chicago, I laid my Laker tools down and study war no more. A team that I've never seen or heard of before. Now I tell people I am now a New Orleans Pelican. Do I have any Pelicans over here? Do I have any Pelicans in this constituency? What about over here? Now, just for the record, Earl Bow, that's a new NBA team. He, he's, he's, he's thinking football, but that's basketball. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move right along. And I wonder how this is going to happen because on the program it says a roast. But this young man I'm going to call, he don't have a, a bad bone in his body. He can't speak evil of no one. And if he do so tonight, it'll shock me. But he's been the pastor for Grace Bible Church for many years. And he's coming now to say something <laughs> about Pastor Wilbur. I don't want to call it toast. I don't want to call it roast. But whatever he do tonight, he's going to do. Let's give it up for Pastor Audley Swain. Yeah, that is true. I, I had difficulty when I was told that I have to, this is a roast. And they're roasting my friend and my pastor. I said, no, I can't do that. I, that's impossible for me to, to roast my friend and my pastor. They said, let me see if I can get some help. So I went to look up the word roast. 
<clears throat> and of course, I see roast turkey, roast chicken, <laughs> <laughs> roast beef. <clears throat> and then I stumbled across a definition that says, I have to find words in jest to humorously humiliate him. I said, oh, Lord. I said, no, I can't do that. Uh, and so I said to my friends when they called, I called them back and they said, no, I can't do this tonight. I just, just, this is just too hard for me. They're my friends. I, I've known him all my Christian life. He and his lovely wife. and They've been such a source of encouragement and inspiration to me, a blessing to me and my wife in ministry. I don't even know anything bad to talk about him. Not in jest. But then the thought came to me that, you know, I travel a lot with Pastor Auden and, uh, and Pastor Beckles, but I get to observe him up close in our travels because we stay together, stay in the same apartment, stay in the same room. And one thing I noticed about him, he doesn't like to go to bed at night. <laughs> Don't like to go to bed. Now, that's the exact opposite of me. I go to bed religiously. Nine o'clock, I'm in bed. And so I said, you know, one thing I notice about this brother, I don't see it in the morning, but I believe he is sleep deprived. Well, we went to Inagor. And the next morning at breakfast, after we got there the first night, the next morning at breakfast, I pulled in early, as I always do. I leave them up talking. I said, how did the night go? Because we always reflected upon the night where he had a good night's sleep. He tells me that they just pull in at 1.30 in the morning. 1.30 in the morning. I couldn't believe that. I said to myself, 1.30 in the morning? What does preachers do until 1.30 in the morning? <laughs> Two things. They either play or they pray. And I know they weren't playing because the wives were home in Freeport and Nassau and other places. And the bar was closed. So I waited for them to say something spiritual so I can know at least they were doing, they were praying. Nothing came. I said to myself, I said, these brothers are sleep deprived and so is my brother. I wonder how many years of sleep you lost, brother. I forget, you know, I was trying to calculate it the other day based upon my little experience with you and I, you know what I'm saying? And I believe you lost at least 30 years of sleep. <laughs> so if you, find him, if you find him nodding off in a conversation, you understand why. He's just getting caught up on sleep. <laughs> Congratulations, my brother. You and Sister Barbara on your 30 days on the journey for the Lord Jesus Christ. I value our friendship, and I appreciate you so much. My wife and I bless you. The congregation of grace bless you. God bless you. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. A pastor, they put this lapel on me. I tell him, Pastor Kyle, when he was putting this on me, this, I am not worthy, you know. This is the pastor's lapel with the pastors as you on Sunday. All of the pastors who are here with us this evening, please stand. I want to give them all a wonderful round of applause. All of the pastors. All of the pastors and their spouses. Come on, give them all. We've come to support. Thank you very much. Pastor Roach, you were scared to stand, eh? You wasn't sure what I was going to say next, eh? <laughs> we also joined this evening by my wonderful member of parliament for the wonderful people of Central Grand Bahama, the Honorable Nico Sigrad and his wife Barbara. Give them a wonderful round of applause. <laughs> and where's my former minister, Shivago Lang? Shivago wrote a book, say, Who Moved My Conk? He should have said in the book, Who Moved Marco City? Coming now to pay tribute to our wonderful pastors, we celebrate 30 years, is the wonderful Bishop, where's Bishop McIntosh? How are you, Bishop McIntosh? Wow, when, when, when Minerva first met Bishop McIntosh, she said he used to wash his face from here, 
So now he's washed his face from way back here. Come on, let's give Bishop McIntosh a wonderful round of applause as he comes with just his face, no head, only face to pay tribute. David, David, David. It's a funny thing about David. Um, we were just doing a study about David, and, and he's quite a character. I don't know if, any, if he's anything like the David that we, um, we have among us today, but yeah, I'll tell you about this, a story about this, since you brought it up. I was in Barbados, and I uh, was down there for about a week, and I didn't get to go to the, you know, my favorite barber is here. And uh, where's David? Where's he at? Where, yeah, he ran out. And so I decided, uh, what am I going to do? I have to minister tonight, and I'm not looking, I don't think, respectable. So I decided, well, I better go to the barber, call my wife, and says, well, this is the story. What do I do? Because, you know, I had a routine. Uh, a lot of the preachers in there know what I'm talking about. But I came to the place and, and I figured out, you know what, this is a lot of hard work. So I said to her, I said, well, uh, I need to go to the Bible. What should I do? She said, why not take it all off? I said, I, I don't know. I cannot warm to that. I, I, I've got issues with that. I, she said, but yeah, go ahead. I think I can like that. And so uh, I did. I stayed at the mirror until they came to collect me. Still was not convinced, but then I, re I figured I was not home. Nobody knows me here like that. And they accepted me. I came home, David. Where are you? I mean, David, you're here. I came home. You talked about this, so I, I needed to say how it came about. And we're going to get to, amen, good pastor in just a moment. <laughs> And uh, I came home, and she said, I like it. No, oh, no, I sent her a selfie. <laughs> I found out uh, how to do it. I sent her a selfie. And she says, she says um, I, I like it. And um, before I went, she says, I, I think it looks sexy on you. Hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I can learn how to adjust to this if that's what you think. And so hence the story. Tonight we're here to celebrate uh, and to uh, roast. And, I, and, and Pastor Swain, I was under the same dilemma. What do, I, what do I do with this? What do I do with this roast? Uh, and I heard about it and I, was, I began thinking about Dean Martin. How many of you are old enough to remember Dean Martin? And, and when they used to roast, and I remember Dean Martin, uh, they, were having a, a, they were roasting Billy Graham. And they had Dean Martin. Uh, why in the world would you have Dean Martin on the stage roasting Billy Graham? And Dean Martin said, I, I remember something about Dr. Graham. He says, um, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I shook his hand, he said, the entire right side of me became sober. <laughs> I said, what, what can I say that is going to be funny, that is going to be witty? And, um, but... but but the man that we are, uh, we are really celebrating tonight, and, and really, for 30 years, that's a long time in ministry, uh, um, uh, Pastor Outen, and uh, for the level of ministry and the level of excellence that has, you've demonstrated among us for so many years, uh, the leadership that you've demonstrated has been always so, uh, such a blessing for me. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about our hookup. Um, I'm right across the street from him. Uh, he was already here, and I remember uh, when the property became available to us and we were pursuing a location, and, uh, and it, was, it became available. I remember before I sat down and, you know, wrote and, and signed the dotted line, I said, I, I'm going, there's a man of God here, and I need to get his feeling on that. And... I'm telling you, this, this man of God, his, the level of respect went to a whole new level for me when I sat in that meeting with him. Because, you know, preachers, sometimes we are, I don't know what it is about us, but for some reason, 
we are so very turf minded, so to speak, and, and, and all the rest of that. But I sat with him and he made me comfortable. He made me feel right at home. He made me to go after what God had put in my heart. And from that moment, we became pretty good friends. Pretty good friends. I recall when we traveled uh, to Abaco. I don't know if Bishop Godfrey Williams is here, but we used to hang out together. The three of us, we were like the three amigos, and uh, we would go and have prayer. And one of the things that was amazing during those times, I am, of course, you know, Pentecostal. I am a tongue talker. I am all of that. And I remember when we would be having our prayer time. Glory to God. And I'm, I'm here just praising and blessing God and all of that. And he'd be sitting right next to me. He's right next to me. And I said, God, you're going to get him today. Amen. 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 I said, he's going to, I'm telling you, the anointing is going to fall on him today. And he's right there saying, yes, Lord. Touch him, Lord. Do it, Lord. And, uh, but he is a, he's an awesome man of God. A man that has walked with integrity among us. That's not a, you know, that's a rare thing in our society today. And I've observed, I've observed a few things about him, and I just want to say it here, and then I'm out of your way. Barbara, you are, you are precious. You know that. Pastor Wilbur Outen, 30 years. It's a long time. 30 years to be declaring the gospel of Jesus Christ. So for 30 years in ministry, that equates to 360 months. Now, Freeport Bible, uh, this is a, you need to hear this. That is, and to see how really old he is, he's older than he's letting on. But let's, let's see it. 360 months, that's 1,560 weeks. 10,957 days. 267,968 hours. That's a lot of time to be trying to find a message every Sunday. <laughs> Let me just give you behind a, a behind the scene view. We were talking sometimes and I said, you know, he said, I feel like Peter after the resurrection. He said, man, I just feel like on a Sunday morning, I just feel like going fishing. I, I just feel like going fishing. And, uh, but we had to resist those times and come and do what God has called us to do. So that's 267,968 hours. Minutes, the minutes you've spent counseling, the minutes that you have spent um, encouraging and lifting uh, and sorting out the world's problems was 80. But, you know, there's another one. And I wondered why when you break it all down, there is seven. So to bring completion, you've been in.